Um, by trade, I'm a cognitive scientist and a linguist, and I study how the brain works and how a physical brain can give rise to thought and language. Um, and we've discovered a huge amount in the last 30 years. And so what I want to do is start out very briefly by giving you the briefest overview of your own minds uh, in ways that you might not be thinking about them. Uh, I was brought up with a certain view of the mind that comes from the year 1650. Uh, think of Descartes. And uh, it gives, it, this, gives, this is called enlightenment reason. And here is the assumptions about reason that I learned growing up, and you may have learned them too. The assumption, first assumption is that you know what you think, that, you, that reason is conscious. The fact is it's 98% unconscious. 98% unconscious. Second, um, reason is supposed to be dispassionate. It's the opposite. You can't be rational without being emotional. What does that mean? Uh, there was a discovery made in the 90s by um, Antonio Damasio and his wife, Hannah. <clears throat> and um, what they discovered was this. Uh, if you look at people who have strokes or brain damage that make them unable to feel, unable to feel emotion, there are such things, uh, what happens? Imagine that you had such a stroke. You can't feel any emotion, and you don't know what anyone else feels, ever. Okay? Now, how would you know what to want? Like and not like don't mean anything to you. Right? You don't know if what you decide to do would result in people hating you or liking you. You couldn't tell. How would you know what to want? You wouldn't. You cannot make a rational decision, and that's what happens with these folks. They screw up their lives completely to make random decisions, and then you know all hell goes breaks loose. And um, you cannot think without emotion. Why? Okay, we'll get to that in a minute. Second, it's assumed that you can reason directly about the world; that reason can fit the world as it is directly. False. Why? Very simple thing. You think with your brain. You have no choice. That's all you can do is think with your brain. Your brain evolved to run a body. Well, everything you understand about anything at all comes through your body and is understood in your brain. Every idea is there in neural circuitry. Without the neural circuitry, you don't think. And we now know how a lot about how Neural circuitry gives rise to thought. But what does it mean? It turns out that the brain is not arbitrarily structured. It's not a general purpose computer or anything like that. It has very particular structure. And that means that you think in terms of structures called frames, for example. What is a frame? Uh, the uh, structure of frames was discovered simultaneously about in the mid-1970s by three great scholars in three different fields. Uh, one of them was Irving Goffman, a sociologist, who studied institutions by working in them, like insane asylums, and he, you know, he spent a year as a croupier in uh, Las Vegas to study Las Vegas, right? And um, he came to, to the conclusion in a book called Frame Analysis in '74 that every institution is structured by a frame. And what is a frame? It's a set of roles that people play. Think of a hospital. There are doctors and nurses and patients and receptionists and places like operating rooms and reception desks and recovery rooms and instruments like scalpels and defibrillators and so on. Those are the elements of the hospital frame. Then there are things that happen in hospitals. Uh, that is the normal stuff. Surgeons operate on patients in operating rooms with scalpels. And you know when the frame is broken. If you walk into the hospital, going to visit somebody, you've got your flowers, you go to the reception desk, there's a doctor lying there, they hand you a scalpel saying you're, you're operating on the doctor, something is wrong. <laughs> right? You've broken the frame. Right? That isn't what happens. You know what happens in hospitals because you know the frame of that. Charles Fillmore, who's a linguist, my colleague, 
observe that every word is defined with respect to a frame. Think of a word like operating room or surgeon, which is re defined with respect to an operation frame and requires uh, you know, certain kinds of tools and so on. That is, you don't have a word like surgeon without a notion of an operation, a patient, things you use to operate on, and so on. So this is important. Every word is defined with respect to such a structure, and that structure is neurally there in your brain. It is a physical thing. Okay? Uh, we think in terms of those things, and they are not neutral. They don't just fit the world as it is. Frames come in systems. And those systems uh, are structured in terms of worldviews and moral, moral views. We'll talk about that in a minute. 